point of view, we all know and we've always been discussing and that was brought out actually in the President IPMA speech about the raw material issue in terms of the fact. Look, what is the issue about the Indian paper industry and why do we talk in terms of saying that there is zero duty from um, ASEAN and uh, FTAs, etc., etc. The whole issue comes around in any industry, not just paper, comes around the issue of competitiveness. If we can be competitive, then why should we bother if there is zero import duty? The question is how do you get the competitiveness? And there are several factors to it. The raw material issue is one very major factor as far as Indian paper industry is concerned. And statistically we know that our cost of wood is significantly higher. So if you look at cost of wood in Brazil, and I could be wrong, don't get me on the exact numbers, we'll be looking at uh, something around, what is it, 40 odd dollars uh, per ton, uh, 40 to 50 dollars in Brazil, maybe Indonesia has moved from that figure now to maybe 60, 70 dollars, 80 dollars. India we're still looking at 100 plus, we are talking 120, 130, or 100 plus dollars for wood. And if you translate that into 2.5, I'm talking now from the wood-based industry, we can see that before we are off the starting block of a race, we are already looking at at least about $100 per ton differential on, on cost of manufacture. Add to that logistics costs. Today is far, and this is not confined to the paper industry, this is a point that I've been submitting before the government several times. In fact, this is a point I've made to Mr. Suresh Prabhu. I spoke to him again just now while he was leaving. He said, you please come. We'll talk about the issue of, uh, of the paper industry and also on the overall, overall, overall cost. I have a presentation I made to Mr. Prabhu on overall competitiveness, not to do with the paper industry alone. You look at our logistics costs, it's far cheaper today to import into our ports. So we are seeing imports coming into the south, particularly because the, uh, the peninsula tapers off. We see it coming into Bombay. And it is so much more costly to move goods from the eastern part of India to west or from north to south to north, etc. So this, when you look at China, China and other developing countries, some of them invested first in creating the infrastructure. Now, when you look at this kind of thing, we get disadvantage. You look at our costs in terms of the time it takes for, for starting up mills land, environment clearances, despite there being single window clearances. There are multiplicity of regulations. There are issues in terms of our manpower flexibility, in terms of how many people we can. So the whole, at the cost of capital, the biggest issue in India is cost of capital. Now if, if um, my friend Mr. Enters gives us lovely equipment from FOIL, whenever I meet him privately, I say, but it is very expensive. And then Mr. Rastogi, I think, made that, or somebody made that point there. The issue is the cost of capital in this country, unfortunately, is extremely high. And until we are able to address some of these issues on a systemic basis, Indian manufacturing per se, my submission is not to do with the paper industry at all, Indian manufacturing per se is significantly disadvantaged. And therefore, we are seeing lots of goods coming in. I'm not complaining, I'm saying unless they're going to fix the basics, till then it's going to be difficult. Therefore you resort to the second point to say what kind of, I hate to use the word, but what kind of protection do you want? So if the duties are zero, should we be saying that there should be some degree of uh, protection for the existing investment? After all, uh, President IPMA's uh, speech, if you see, uh, clearly brings out that the paper industry in India has invested more than five billion dollars in the last, what is it, seven, eight years? Ten years maybe? Seven, eight, seven, eight years, because that's what I would think. And today when we are talking, somebody asked the question of an APP coming to India. APP is saying this is the largest single, uh, uh, this is a large investment and India is talking about it being a single largest FDI in one place. It's three and a half billion dollars. The Indian industry has already invested five billion dollars. So if we look at things in a perspective, our whole issue comes back to the issue of fundamental competitiveness. But for the paper industry, the raw material is a big thing. Now here's the, here's the interesting part of it. I think this government, after I mean many years of several governments, has progressed to a position where they have actually moved uh, proposals for some kind of, for, for an entire forestry policy, it's not to do with the paper industry alone, wherein there is a chance 
that there would be the ability for us to grow raw material. We have been, Gopal, how many decades have you been lobbying about the issue of degraded land? At least three that I can recall, maybe. Yeah, at least three decades at least that I can recall. So maybe, we don't know, but maybe there is some possibility. So the issue here is, it's not raw material. It is the kind of employment that this generates. And in India, if we look at the whole thing, we are talking about employment being the biggest issue. What is jobs? Where, where are governments being elected or governments falling forward? The issue of jobs. And if you look at the issue of jobs, this is one area where there, are, there is employment potential for lakhs of people to be employed and employed in backward areas, in tribal areas, not in urban areas, which is what we want as a country. So why, why am I mentioning all this? Why am I mentioning all this so that all of us are in this business, in this industry? If we can use our individual outreach not to one, to spread this message that this generates jobs. Plantation generates jobs. It creates a positive eco environmental ecosystem and it brings revenue to government and of course it helps the industry become competitive, which becomes a virtuous cycle because then the domestic industry can grow. We are today importing billions of dollars worth of material which are related to the industry in the sense that it is whether it comes in the form of fiber as in waste paper or pulp or whether it's coming in the form of finished goods of paper or whether timber, timber itself, apart from the paper industry, we look at the entire plywood industry, look at everything, everything is being imported. People, many people are living in Calcutta, you see all these trucks every day bringing these huge logs which are going into a sand, etc. Now the funny part is we are living in a country where it is possible to have forest resources. Forest as in not forest, but commercial forestry and wood-based resources which, which are recyclable, renewable, growing. Um, you also mentioned that, you know, paper as opposed to some fossil fuel. I mean, wood is very, is, is, is a renewable source. But we are stuck through greater and greater imports, which are today, if, you, if, I, if I remember correctly, the whole thing, if you take the whole chain outside the paper industry also, is about $10 billion, Mr. Mehta, something like that, if I remember. Ten billion dollars of imports, including wood, this, that, not for not for paper industry, but the whole ecosystem, which is uh, which is a huge figure. And when we can grow these resources in this country, there is no reason why this can't be done. So therefore, raw material is the biggest issue, and I think we should use all our our um, outreach, as I said, to impress this on policymakers that this is a win-win situation. It's not the paper industry demands raw material. It is, the whole issue is to do with other benefits that we can get to the economy. So that is one part.